Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of my Raptor series. I recently just purchased a Raptor about 770 miles ago, and uh, I wanted to share with you my experience of ordering it, dealing with Ford. I'm not going to mention any of the dealers, but you know, you see on YouTube and uh, Facebook literally all the time people getting their Raptors, and it wasn't it wasn't that for me. It wasn't easy. Uh, it took over a year, a bunch of follow-up, a bunch of disappointment, frankly. And then finally, I just bit the bullet and found one. Uh, the truck I ordered over a year ago, it still hasn't even been made. So this video is really just about my experience. And uh, if you're having that experience, maybe you won't feel so bad because it happened to somebody else. And if you haven't had that experience and you got your truck really fast, uh, or you, you found one and you paid a, paid a premium, hey, good for you. But that was not my experience by any means. Anyway, stay tuned. So this Raptor journey started, I had a uh, Toyota Tacoma, and if you followed my channel, you know that I did a whole bunch of videos on my Tacoma. I absolutely loved the Tacoma, and I decided to go ahead and get a Raptor. And I ordered my first, uh, the first time I ordered it was in June of 2021. So we are in August of 2022 right now. Uh, so June of 2021, I ordered the Raptor and the dealer called me at the end of June and said, we're canceling your order. They're not making 2021s anymore. We'll call you uh, if you, um, once they start making them, right? So they stayed true to their word and they called me in October, on October 30th of 2021 and said, if you place your order right now, we will, uh, we will fulfill it. We will give you one of our allocations. So I went ahead and ordered it and uh, they called me later that day, uh, asked, you know, I, I gave them a deposit. I had to fill out the credit card authorization and, and scan it and send it back to them. And uh, they sent me a build sheet and within a couple days or maybe a week, I got the uh, sales code and the order number and the build sheet. I got everything, a $500 deposit, and I was feeling pretty good about the truck that I ordered. Well, then I found out through Facebook that you could track it. There's an 800 number you can call, plus you can get the app and you can, you can track uh, the build, or maybe it's just the email and you can track the build. I never did figure out how to do anything on the app. I think it's just the email. So. I would call this 800 number every couple weeks and give them the sales code and the order number and they would tell me that it is in unscheduled clean. <laughs> Actually for a while, for a couple months it was in order accepted and then it changed to unscheduled clean. And from what I learned, unscheduled clean means it's a clean order, the dealer actually had an allocation and uh, it's unscheduled, so they don't have the parts or for whatever reason. Now, meanwhile, they're building Raptors every day and people are getting their Raptors every day, but for whatever reason, this particular one, which by the way, had a priority code of 19 out of 20. And over the year waiting, I would talk to the guys at Ford Performance at the 800 number and they would give me their opinion every time and their opinion was slightly different. Uh, because they don't really know. And they're really awesome guys. They're just totally upfront with you. They're like, all we can do is look at the order and kind of form a conclusion based on other people's orders and what we've heard has happened. And their number one advice to me was to get the dealer to make the priority code better. They didn't necessarily what say what better is, but they said 19 is really bad. So I literally called every couple weeks. Uh, at, towards the end here, I called every week. And this truck ordered October 30th still has never been built. In fact, I just got an email from Ford a couple days ago 
here in August of 2022 that re they really apologize and they're having a hard time sourcing whatever, whatever. So at least the, the order is actually there. And I did leave the order active. Uh, I ended up putting a deposit on another one. I'll tell you about that story. But uh, th the long story short on the original order is I decided to just leave it because I actually do have a contract for um, 2021 pricing. So they had a $6,000 price increase, plus they're charging a market premium. Um, but supposedly, if this thing is ever made, I have a chance of buying it at the 2021 price. In my opinion, it's never going to be made, but we'll see. I left my deposit and, and we'll see what ends up happening. It'll be an interesting story anyway. So I'm checking on this thing. It's never ordered or it's never built. And in February of 2021, the dealer, the salesman calls me and says, hey, we have an orange one here and uh, it's yours if you want it. Uh, the owner backed out or the person who ordered it backed out. So I talked to my wife and I thought about it and I just, I'm not an orange truck guy. Uh, I, I really didn't want any other color than silver. And so that didn't, you know, I said, no, I'm going to pass. Plus my wife wasn't really crazy about uh, the, the orange either. And, you know, she has to be happy. There has to be, uh, the last thing I'm going to do is, is, you know, piss her off. I mean, the truck is expensive and I don't really need it. So I certainly don't want to have some orange truck in front of the house that is going to irritate her every time she sees it, right? You would, you would never want that. Uh, so I passed on that one and then still nothing. Fast forward to June of 2021, not too long ago. And the dealer calls again and says, Hey, we have a black one. It's spec'd slightly different than the one you wanted. It had like one extra thing in it, which is that 2000 watt inverter. I didn't really want that. Um, but it was um, spec'd close enough and I didn't really want black, but I said, all right, you know, my wife's perspective was, hey, if you don't get the black one, you may not get one at all. So I put a deposit on the black one. It was supposed to be here in two weeks and I started to kind of prepare myself to have a black car. You know, I started, uh, you know, calling a detail shop that we're headed to now actually and asking, you know, just how hard is it to keep swirls out of the black? paint what could I do uh, just how hot is black in Florida is there any way to keep it cooler inside uh, just you know thinking and overthinking and processing uh, having a black truck so the weeks went by and there was a delay on this black one every single week uh, the most they would delay it out is two weeks sometimes it was as short as four days but literally it it was delayed it, it's still not, the dealer still hasn't taken delivery and we're in the middle of August. It left, um, whatever you call it, uh, Deer, Deer Park or wherever, wherever they're made, it left there May 9th and it has just been delayed since May 9th. I didn't get involved until the first week of June, but what a joke. I, I just, I couldn't believe that, that they can't figure out where this truck is. Um, and then I found out they wanted a $10,000 premium. And I said, but wait a minute, I have one on order. Why can't you just take that order for yourself and give me my pricing on this one that the, the guy who ordered it or the, or the lady who ordered it backed out on? No, they wouldn't do that. They would not budge on the market adjustment price. So I still decided, all right, fine. I'll, I'll just pay the market adjustment and, and, you know, it'll be what it is. So... This black one kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed, and uh, they I got the zone rep involved. The guys at Port Ford Performance said, you know, the zone rep has a lot of power. And then I got this email saying, the zone rep said it will definitely be here on Friday. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay. Uh, it didn't come on Friday, as I figured. And, the, and there was nothing. The zone rep didn't do anything. The the dealer is just like, well, we don't know. Uh, evidently Ford had a bunch of them stolen and the dealer's silver lining was, we confirmed that it wasn't the, one of the stolen ones. And it's just mm -hmm. like, are you Mine kidding me? Left. So anyway, uh, it doesn't come in and I call Ford 
uh, you can call, I called their 800 number, customer service number, and they referred me to their marketing department. And I said, hey, you know, I just want to ask, do I have any options here? The, the dealer is trying to charge me this market adjustment fee. I'm getting more and more irritated about that, mainly because I have one on order that's never been built. And Ford, Ford uh, Marketing tells me that there's really nothing they can do. I can file a complaint against the dealer. However, she says to me, you may not want to do that until you actually, actually get your truck because if you file a complaint against the dealer, they may not sell you the truck anymore. And I'm like, wow, that's how you guys do business? She said, hey, it's not my rules, but the dealers have ultimate power in setting price Turn and deciding who they're going Cleveland to sell Avenue. to. So I did not file a complaint, but what I did tell her, which I'm sure is on a recorded line, is I have this truck on order, it has never been made, the dealer gave me, is giving me the runaround or they're not really giving me the runaround because they don't really have the truck either, but it's just a frustrating process because I still don't have the black truck and they want to charge me this $10,000 fee. So I told her the whole story and I decided not to file a complaint and just be done with it. Well, the next thing you know, I emailed the dealer and said, hey, any, any word and I don't get a response. And the salesman texts me from his personal cell phone saying, your phone number has been blocked by the dealership. I have to get management to unblock your phone number, but I can communicate with you via text. He's like, I don't know why your phone number has been blocked. My phone number was blocked like the week after the week of me calling forward and not filing a complaint, just telling them that I was unhappy. They did ask me what the dealer was. I told them and the dealer blocked my number as do not call. It's like an internal thing. That was really strange to me. I guess if you have a customer that isn't happy and you don't want them getting surveys, you just block their number. Maybe there's an idea. Anyway, I got really irritated after my number had been blocked and the truck still hadn't arrived and I had some drive time. And on a Friday, I called probably 25 dealers in Florida and I told them all the same thing. Hey, I have money. I want to buy a Raptor. If you have one that falls through, please call me. Just take my number down. Please call me. And a couple of them had Raptors and they were, and they said this one dealership uh, said, well, we've got one here. There's a $25,000 premium. And I said, are you guys, are you kidding? He told me all about the truck. Uh, he actually texted me while we were on the phone the window sticker. Very nice guy. All about the truck. It has this, it has that. Oh, and there's a $25 premium. And I said, are you kidding? And he hung up on me instantly. I mean, he turned into a jerk. Uh, another dealership told me that they had one um, $15,000 premium, but they were willing to negotiate the premium. Uh, and this was all while I was calling on the phone. So, that following, that Monday, that next Monday, um, the dealership, a dealership in Florida, about, about two hours, a little over two hours uh, from my house, a dealership calls me. I don't want to tell you the dealerships because, you know, this isn't about that. Um, the dealership calls me and says, uh, we have one. Hold on a minute. I can't do more than one thing at a time. Um, this dealership calls me and says, Hey, we have one, a deal fell through. You've got to buy it right now today. I'm like, I can't buy it right now today. I'm two hours away and I've got to work. And he said, um, well, uh, I said, can't I just give you a deposit and come get it later in the week? And he said, no, we don't take deposits on Raptors. And I said, and by the way, this was, this is the one that I'm driving. It's silver. It has everything that I wanted. It has that 2000 watt inverter thing, which I guess that's good for resale. The only thing that it had, which was a total waste that I peeled off instantly was a thousand dollars worth of stickers, which was really kind of painful. I now have a $1,000 sticker ball because uh, I really didn't like the stickers. Hey, I know some people really love the stickers. They're just not for me. So no judging, 
it just wasn't something that, that I like. I like it just cleaner. And if you were wondering, they literally peel right off. Started it with my fingernail, came off in a couple pieces, no residue, no nothing. Here's a quick shot of the hood. And um, now I have, like I mentioned, a rather expensive sticker ball. I did end up buying it, but uh, he says to me, we don't take deposits on Raptors and we will, uh, there's only one way that you can, you can buy it without being here and you have to do 100% financing. So I said, well, okay, how do I do that? He goes, you can pay, pay for it when you get here, but you have to run the financing in order for us to kind of fake sell it to you, make sure you're a, a real customer. So I had to go online, fill out their in-house dealership loan application, 100% financing. I get approved. I have really good credit. I wasn't worried about that. Uh, once I got approved, they called me back and sent me a, sent me a little contract of some sort and uh, said, okay, it's yours. You gotta come get it tomorrow. <laughs> they were, I said, can't I come this weekend? No, we're not gonna hold it that long. So I ended up taking the day off and uh, drove to get it. Um, I ended up renting a car, driving up there, returning the car to the nearest airport, taking an Uber from the airport over to the dealer, which was only about 20 minutes. And um, I ended up making a deal a and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm really happy. Here's what it looked like when I arrived at the dealer. They were expecting me, so they had it right out front. It was just beautiful. I was so excited. Uh, we took it for a drive and then pretty much immediately jumped into financing. So that was my uh, October, November, uh, let's see. Well, I guess not quite a full year from October from the order date because we're only in August, but it was um, June, July, August, September, October. Uh, 12 months, I'm, I'm sorry, 14 months. That was my 14 month journey on trying to buy a Raptor. Uh, I don't have any previous dealer, um, you know, I, I don't have any relationship with Ford. Uh, miles, turn left and uh, you know, just regular guy wants to buy a Raptor, 14 freaking months. So I get to the dealership. Uh, I knew that there was a $10,000 premium, but I was gonna try to negotiate uh, and it actually worked. So what I ended up doing was uh, they wanted to sell me this GPS thing for some thousands of dollars and uh, an extended warranty for some more thousands of dollars. It worked out to be probably a little over $5,000 for all of that stuff. And um, I said, hey, I will buy that stuff, but you have to take it off of the market premium. You know, it was, it was uh, towards the end of the month um, they clearly wanted to get those additional sales of, of those um, other products, the GPS service and the extended warranty. So they agreed. I was really kind of surprised. So in reality, I probably, well, I know I paid a little over $4,000 extra, which I can live with. I mean, I, I, I just think it's such BS that the dealerships are so greedy that they do this. Uh, I know it's pretty common practice. Uh, but um, I think their days are numbered. I think that more and more manufacturers are gonna go direct, uh, but that's to be seen. Um, but, um, but I do feel a little better about, you know, paying a premium by getting something for it. So if you are in that situation and the dealer agrees, uh, try to negotiate that market adjustment down um, or uh, buy more stuff and have them credit that. So, let's see, whoops, um, I'm getting, I'm getting close to this detail shop. That's a whole other video. Uh, anyway, the other thing that I was able to negotiate on, which I highly recommend doing is the interest rate because I did end up financing 50% of the truck. And what I did was, um, they gave me their best rate. Now, my credit score is in the high 800s. And what I ended up doing, I'm just gonna park here real quick and finish up. Um, what I ended up doing was, that's where I'm going by the way, right there, right there, next level detailing. This is, this is like the premier detailer in uh, Fort Myers. Anyway, what I ended up doing was, uh, 
they offered me 5.8% interest, which is just stupid. I mean, who the hell would pay that? And uh, I called my bank and my bank offered me 2%. And I was literally right there in the room and I said, hey, you know, my bank's offering me 2%. Um, I'll just go with them. And they said, uh, okay, let me see if I can match it. Now they know that my credit score is great and they never had me verify it. So you could basically tell them whatever you want. If your credit score is high enough, you can say, hey, I'm not paying that. I'll just finance it through this other bank or this other lender. And uh, what ended up happening was, evidently they're incentivized for this. The uh, loan guy, you know, the guy that you sit with that tries to sell you all the extra stuff and, and you sign the papers. The loan guy said, well, we have 100% in-house financing for the month uh, and I'm not going to tarnish that record. So there must be some perk for doing that. They matched the 2%, uh, which I was like, hey, that's super great. Not only did they match the 2%, but Ford Ford Finance matched, well, he pushed it through to match. He was on the phone with them, they wouldn't approve it, and he says, well, I'm just gonna push it through, that's how I roll. So, I have no idea where the truth is in all of this, but um, I ended up getting a 2% loan on half the, uh, half the value of the truck, and uh, I'm really happy with that, and it's with Ford Finance, so I'll be building credit with Ford Finance, which is good if I buy another Raptor or another Ford product for that matter. Uh, so anyway, that was my experience buying a Raptor. I know it's kind of long, I can, I can babble. Uh, I hope you've found value in the video. If you're interested in uh, the videos on all these projects that I've done so far to the truck, like I mentioned, I put a, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I put a rolling cover on the back. I shot a video for that. I, I assembled and put together the Ford flip out bed extender, uh, which is basically the, um, the amp research one just designed specifically for Ford. It's a little better. It's more expensive, but it bolts into the truck in a better way than the amp research one does. Did a video on that. Uh, if you deleted the auto start stop, I hate that blank. I hated that blank. I went ahead and bought the actual switch and replaced it. So it lights up and everything, it just doesn't work, but now you don't have a blank on your dash. I put a blend mount on my radar detector, mounted that right up underneath the, the um, you've heard it go off a couple times, and then hardwired it into the fuse box, shot a video on that. And now we're about to do this, uh, this detail package where they polish out the truck, ceramic coat it, uh, put the Expel on the hood and the fenders and uh, tint the windows. Uh, so I'm gonna do a video on that also. So if you're into Raptors and you wanna see this stuff, uh, I hope you subscribe. Thanks for staying with me through this whole video. I know it was kinda long and I hope you found value in hearing my experience uh, buying this truck. So till next time, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.